Vladimir Putin is on the defensive, and analysts in Ukraine and worldwide are concerned about his following desperate action. A Ukrainian lawmaker asserts that Vladimir Putin is planning something utterly heinous and warns the United Kingdom, headed by incoming Prime Minister Liz Truss, to be prepared for another wild action. Lesia Vasilenko, a member of parliament, described the recovery of Izium as a major strategic gain from a military standpoint. She said, Ukraine is also making confident progress in the countries northeast and southeast. We are making progress not just for our benefit, but also to restore lasting peace to the continent. However, when asked what she believed Mr. Putin will do next, she said, no one can know what this power-hungry man is thinking. Whatever it is, we must be prepared as Ukrainians, we must be prepared, and you must be prepared in the United Kingdom. And in fact, people throughout the globe need to be ready for the occurrence of another heinous atrocity at any moment. Ms. Vasilenko said, for this, Ukrainians must have the requisite quantity of self-defense guns and ammunition. And the West must be prepared to implement every penalty against Russia. Following a Shanghai Cooperation Organization conference in the Uzbek city of Samarkand, Putin illustrated her argument by stating, the Kiev authorities have proclaimed that they have begun and are conducting an intensive counteroffensive campaign. Let's see how it develops and concludes. Ukrainian reveals horrifying facts about his captivity by Russians' torture of hell. Yulia Paevska described her traumatic months-long imprisonment in Russian-occupied territory. In her testimony before U.S. Senators, Ms. Paevska described how Russian soldiers treat Ukrainians harshly. She said that seized Ukrainians were also subjected to great cruelty at the hands of the military. Biden gives a single word warning to Putin as concerns of a nuclear launch increase. Joe Biden has cautioned Vladimir Putin not to use tactical nuclear weapons in Ukraine, threatening undefined consequences should he do so. In an interview on American television, journalist Scott Pelley argues that Vladimir Putin was driven into a corner when his troops were pushed back in the Kharkiv area and there were rumors of Russian soldiers abandoning the battlefield. Putin confronts public opposition as Kremlin mutiny intensifies, with Russians calling the despot to leave. An increasing number of rebels are demanding Vladimir Putin's resignation from the Ukraine conflict. Daniil Berman, a human rights attorney, has condemned the so-called special military operation of the Russian dictator, calling it a hot conflict with a sovereign state that must be halted. Greece will deploy 40 amphibious combat vehicles to Ukraine as Zelensky pulls Russia back. Greece will give Ukraine amphibious combat vehicles worth $1 million to assist Ukraine in its struggle against Russian soldiers. Early in Moscow's special military operation, military specialists stated that this signified the return of industrial warfare. Putin addressed China's alarm about the Ukraine conflict during a contentious meeting with Xi. Vladimir Putin appeared unusually tense during yesterday's meeting with Xi Jinping, his Chinese counterpart. In contrast, the Chinese president seemed calm, sometimes breaking a cheeky grin. During his public speech, Putin addressed China's questions and worries on the crisis in Ukraine. Ukraine investigates a cemetery captured by Russia for the dead. Using white protective suits and rubber gloves, Ukrainian rescue personnel dug up further remains from a forested burial ground in a freshly reclaimed area from Russian troops while residents searched for deceased relatives. At least 17 Ukrainian militaries were discovered in a mass burial on Friday, while others may be civilians buried in individual graves marked with weak wooden crosses. Although the reasons for death have not yet been determined, locals allege that some of the graves near the village of Izium include victims of an airstrike. At least one of the dead, according to Ukrainian investigators, had bound hands and rope markings on the neck. Moscow has not commented on the grim finding. Russia continues to bombard several regions of Ukraine. In response to the Ukrainian bombardment near the Zaporizhia nuclear power facility, Russia conducted airstrikes against Ukrainian forces in different regions. According to the ministry, Russian troops launched their attacks in the districts of Kherson, Mykolaiv, Kharkiv, and Donetsk, while Ukrainian forces attempted a fruitless assault near Pravdine in Kherson. According to the government, radiation readings at Zaporizhia, the largest nuclear power station in Europe, remain normal. 
Saturday saw two instances of Ukrainian shelling near the factory, according to the report. A Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs representative denied that its soldiers had shelled the facility in the south of the nation. Ukraine mourns ballet dancer. On Saturday, the National Opera of Ukraine held a memorial ceremony for a prominent Ukrainian ballet dancer killed this week while battling Russian invaders on the front lines of his country's conflict. On September 12th, the National Opera recognized Oleksandr Shapovil as a valiant romantic and courageous fighter killed by Russian mortar fire in eastern Ukraine. The foyer of the Opera House was packed with mourners, including soldiers from Shapovil's unit, honor guards, and members of Kiev's cultural community, who laid flowers on his coffin before wrapping it in a blue and yellow Ukrainian flag. Shapovil, 47, resigned from a lengthy career as a dancer at the National Opera last year and started teaching in Kiev before joining a territorial guard to protect the city during Russia's February 24th invasion. Later, he enrolled in the army and fought in the Donetsk area of eastern Ukraine, where some of the most violent combat occurred. Roman Tershiv, who fought with Shapovil in the same unit, said, It is always difficult to lose a buddy. He was a buddy and brother in arms to me. He was an outstanding individual. My spirit is devoid. To me, he will exist forever. I told you there would be no war, Modi says to Putin. In statements made during a televised conference in Uzbekistan, Narendra Modi delivered a scathing rebuke to Vladimir Putin, reminding him that now is not the time for war. Putin has frequently said that Russia is not isolated since it can look east to great Asian countries like China and India. Mr. Modi made his worries clear at a conference of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SCO. During a meeting in the old Uzbek Silk Road city of Samarkand, he said, I am aware that the current period is not one of conflict, and I have discussed this with you over the phone. As Modi commented, the supreme leader of Russia since 1999 pursed his lips, glanced at Modi, and then looked down before stroking the hair on the back of his head. Complex and perilous after the IAEA's visit to Zaporizhia, the nuclear power plant presents a grave danger. According to an expert, the Zaporizhia nuclear station, ZNPP, in Ukraine continues to represent a significant nuclear hazard even after a visit by the world's nuclear energy organization. Since March, Russian soldiers have seized the factory, which has endured constant bombardment, some of which have damaged the complex's vital infrastructure. Concerns exist over the facility's power supply and the possibility of a false flag strike by Russian troops designed to make it seem like Kiev attacked the plant. Dr. Paul Dorfman is an associate fellow at the University of Sussex Business School specializing in civil nuclear. He has advised several governments, including the United Kingdom, on nuclear policy. He said the situation was hazardous, especially keeping the facilities supplied with electricity. Putin is red-faced because Ukraine will retake all Russian-occupied territory. David Petrius expects that Vladimir Putin's troops will suffer a terrible, painful withdrawal from all the Ukrainian territory they have seized since February 24th. Mr. Petrius is convinced that after reclaiming control of the northeastern Kharkiv area, Ukraine will be able to advance not just into Russian-controlled territory acquired during the invasion, but also into the Crimea and Donbass regions. Mr. Petrius, discussing the potential evolution of the war, said, There will be more intense combat, more losses, and more devastating Russian attacks on civilian infrastructure, but I believe that Ukraine will eventually reclaim the land that Russia has occupied since February 24th. And it is now even possible for them to recapture Crimea and the Donbass. Biden gives a grave warning about Putin's potential deployment of tactical nuclear weapons. Joe Biden has cautioned Vladimir Putin not to use tactical nuclear weapons in Ukraine, threatening undefined consequences should he do so. In an interview on American television, journalist Scott Pelley claims that Vladimir Putin was pushed into a corner. He said, I wonder, Mr. President, what you would tell him if he were contemplating the use of chemical or tactical nuclear weapons. Mr. Biden said, don't, don't, don't. You will alter the face of combat unprecedentedly since World War II. Mr. Biden said, you believe I would tell you if I knew precisely what it would be? Of course, I'm not going to tell you. 
it will have repercussions. They'll become more of a pariah in the world than ever. And the severity of their actions will decide the appropriate reaction. Izium captures an extraordinary moment. The recovery of Izium, according to Ukrainian lawmaker Lesia Vasilenko, was a major strategic achievement from a military standpoint. Ukraine is also making strong progress in the countries northeast and southeast, she told Sky News. We are making progress not just for ourselves, but also to restore lasting peace to the continent. When asked what she believed Mr. Putin would do next, she said, no one can know what this power-hungry man is thinking. Ms. Vasilenko said, whatever it is, we must be prepared as Ukrainians. You must be prepared in the United Kingdom. People across the globe must be prepared for the occurrence of a heinous atrocity or another act of insanity. To do this, the Ukrainians must have the required weapons and ammunition to defend themselves, and the West must be willing to impose all sanctions on Russia. Zelensky welcomes Nike's Russia exit. Friday, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said he had talked with Nike Inc. and praised the company for making what he termed the correct choice to withdraw from Russia. During his nightly video message, he said, this illustrates how business can play an essential role in safeguarding humanity and liberty. If a nation takes the route of terror, it is the responsibility of every self-respecting company to remove itself from that nation. The Ukrainian leaders supplied no more information. Nike representatives were unable to comment immediately. Russia refers to its efforts in Ukraine as an ad hoc operation. Nike informed Reuters on June 23rd that it was leaving Russia entirely after announcing in March that it would temporarily cease operations at all Nike-owned and operated shops in Russia due to Moscow's activities in Ukraine. Russia is predicted to struggle to keep control of a crucial portion of Ukraine. According to the Russian Ministry of Defense, Russia would undoubtedly struggle to protect a vital territory in eastern Ukraine from Volodymyr Zelensky's troops. Ukraine conducts offensive operations in the northeast of the nation. At the same time, Russian troops have constructed a defensive line between the Oskil River and the town of Svatov, according to the daily briefing from Defense Intelligence. This zone is traversed by one of the few major resupply routes Russia currently controls from the Belgorod region. Therefore, Russia presumably views keeping control of this area as crucial. Additionally, this line runs along the boundary of Luhansk Oblast, a portion of the Donbass that Russia seeks to liberate as one of its immediate war objectives, the report said. Any significant territorial loss in Luhansk would unquestionably weaken Russia's objectives. It is uncertain if Russia's frontline soldiers have sufficient reserves or good morale to survive any coordinated Ukrainian attack. As Moscow was sheltered from conflict, Putin's plan to reduce political expenses was presented. By ensuring that only a limited number of frontline soldiers are drawn from the capital, the Kremlin has carefully shielded Moscow from the terrible realities of war. According to reports, Vladimir Putin has withdrawn Russian military soldiers from smaller cities on the country's fringes to shelter the political elite from the repercussions of his special military operation in Ukraine. As a result of the Russian government's tight control over the media and the internet, it is difficult for the majority of the civilian population to get trustworthy intelligence updates about the battle. Dr. Patrick Berry, a conflict expert, told that, much has been done to keep the political costs as low as possible. 